Hi, this is Eric, and if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, right down there is a subscribe button. Click that, subscribe with us. We would love to have you along for the journey. Welcome to Driven Industries Sunday Night Podcast. This is Eric, and I am the founder of Driven Industries. And tonight's podcast is a solo podcast. It's going to be the last one of its kind. Uh, from now on, the podcasts that I end up doing are actually going to be with a guest speaker. That way we bring in more tools and able to get a better message across even, uh, along with the, also sharing others' experiences than just my own. Uh, the more that we learn and the more tools that we have from others, the better that we can become and, and the more that we can find different resources and find out what worked for others. And it's about finding tools and people helping people and what works best for us and may not work best for the other person. Uh, the more that we get others to discuss with us, the, the more tools and resources out there that we're going to end up finding. And again, you know, no one should suffer silently. No one should go through life alone. And that's what this is all about. And so tonight, the big thing that I really wanted to talk about and go over uh, it was something that I had just experienced recently, uh, and, and that is depression. There's a lot of different types of depression out there, uh, whether the depression is you know, clinical-based depression, whether it's, it's almost self-imposed depression uh, with anxiety. And you know, the, the thing that I've, I've noticed that I've suffered from before is, is self-imposed kind of depression. Uh, there's different types of depression that I, I know that are out there. Uh, but all of them are extremely crippling and to the point sometimes where it's even hard to, to leave the bedroom and, and, and our brains are so powerful that we just keep beating ourselves up and beating ourselves up and are we good enough and I, how do I make it through the day and where do I go from here? And so I'm really I'm going to use a personal story that this has just happened to me recently and it was a great example of how important support is in overcoming and beating depression. And I don't think that we ever really truly beat depression. But I think that we overcome it and find those tools that when it does pop up its head, you know, we, we always want to be prepared for it to hit, but we're not always prepared for it to hit. In fact, I think very rarely are we ever prepared for it to hit. But it's how quickly we can respond to it when we realize just where we're going with it. And so, for example, this, this past week, it really threw me for a loop personally. Uh, I had a job that I'd been at for a little over a year as a sales manager for a RV dealership. And, and due to, you know, looking in and knowing that I can control the controllable and change the changeable, it's all about growth. And I had made a decision earlier this month and as what I had interpreted almost as a joke as in being funny, uh, ended up being a little bit more serious and apparently had affected somebody a little bit differently than what I had expected. Uh, which is something that uh, hardcore belief of mine I, I'm not about. Uh, I'm very big on supporting others and, and believing in others. So it, this was something that really caught me off guard. So I share this because it, it affected me on a personal level where it really got me into a state of depression. And I'll share with you a couple of the tools that I use to get me out of this depression and, and to get me pushing forward again. The whole thing started actually uh, this last weekend where I ended up parting ways with the job that I loved. Um, I, I really enjoy being in sales. I, I've done it for 17 years. It's all that I know. And I really enjoyed the position that I had. It gave me the time to really focus also on this business, it gave me the, the free time off that I needed uh, to focus on this business. And in, in return, though, Saturday, uh, we ended up having a, a situation that came up where it resulted in no longer being with the company. I was either kind of part ways with them or they were going to part ways with me. Uh, there was no ifs, ands, ways about it. And it took a lot for me to come to terms with it. But coming to terms with all this, it really sunk me into a state of depression. And, and I look back and go, okay, where did this depression start from? Well, the depression started from is the fact that something happened that was out of my control and I allowed it to really get to me and affect my mental state and affect how I felt about myself. Uh, I felt like a failure. I felt defeated. Um, I felt like a letdown. I let my wife down. Uh, next thing you know here, I'm, I'm not working and, and I'm not the sole income earner, but I was the breadwinner uh, of her family. And so I, I took this as a huge all of a sudden life change. Uh, if you've ever you know, parted ways with a job or lost a job, uh, it affects you in many different ways. And if you're going through it right now, my heart goes out to you. 
So what ends up happening is I part ways and and I don't fully understand both sides of the story and and I'm very defeated because uh, I I could have controlled the situation. I could have acted differently in it and I did not. And so next thing I know, here I am without a job. Um, I'm now in the job hunt. I haven't been doing in the job hunt for a while and really scared and really nervous about, you know, what's the next step of my life? This isn't what I had planned out. I'm a very big planner. If you haven't noticed and watched some of our YouTube videos, uh, planning is everything to me. I'm very structured in my life. Uh, I live it by a calendar. uh, And I like to know and I find very much comfort in knowing, you know, what the next step is and what the next move is before I'm going to be doing it. Well, I'm not put in a position that's out of my comfort zone. And whenever we're out of our comfort zone, we have to realize that. If we don't realize that, one of the biggest things that we fall back into is we fall into depression and, and, and the anxiety builds up and we become stressed out and what do I do? And it becomes a panic. And the worst thing that we can ever do is start to really panic when we're depressed because if we panic, what personally at least happens to me, my anxiety level goes up tremendously. And when my anxiety level and depression go up, I begin to shut down and it's very hard for me to open up. And I I don't know if you can relate to that, but it's something that I've experienced before multiple times in my life uh, at different times. I thought I'd be a little bit more prepared for this one, but I wasn't. And so when something's out of our control like that, it, it shifts our life and it shifts this plan and it shifts just everything into the unknown. The unknown can be scary, but I'm also a firm believer of you know what, everything does happen for a reason. And you can sit there and and turn this off at this point and say, you know, I don't believe in that. But hear me out. I mean, as dumb as it might sound, I mean, everything kind of does happen for a reason because look at where you're at right now in life. Think about it. I mean, how many different times have we hit a point in our life where we're like, man, this is the end. Where do I go from here? But then also we hit a very high point and we're like, wait a minute, it, it all happened for a reason and now I just found this and, and all these changes in my life happened that are all positive. And then we start looking back saying this thing that was so devastating to us was a blessing all of a sudden. Well, how does that happen? It's all in our mentality and how we look at it. And that's one of the biggest tools that we have is our brain. Our brain's our own worst enemy, but it's also our best tool because when it shifts focus, it completely shifts focus. And one of the best ways to get through the depression is remember that what the good times are and remember the good things that happened and remember the feelings that you had of the touch, the smells, your outlook on life when you walked outside that door, how your shoulders were back and your head was high. Those can come back around. And if we forget about that and we live only in that moment, we let the depression overwhelm us and and grow on us. And it's kind of like the crab effect. Uh, if you don't know what the crab effect is, it's it's the theory that crabs will grab at anything. Well, if you put a bucket of crabs and you don't put a lid on it, no crab will escape that because they'll pull each other down. They have nothing else to grab, so they grab each other and pull them down. Well, when we're depressed, sometimes what ends up happening is we want to vent it. We want to vocalize it, but we also don't want to burden others, and we don't want to pull others down per se, but inevitably, a lot of times we do. And a lot of times when I talk to, fam- uh, not families, but when I talk to people that are, are depressed, uh, you know, they feel very alone and they have no one else and, and a lot of the support might have left their life. And it's one of those things that when no matter how depressed we are, we've got to be very coherent and very aware of if we're pulling somebody down because there's a difference between pulling somebody down and venting. And what I mean by that is is misery loves company, and that's where the crabs come into effect. If if all the crabs can't get out, they're going to make sure no one else gets out. And sometimes we get that way with depression where we're so involved in our own brain that we want to pull everyone down to our level. The more that we pull everyone down to our level, though, it doesn't help us at all. It, It doesn't make us any less lonely. In fact, it can make us lonelier. Because instead of using our support to help lift us up and and listening to the positive messages and doing self-maintenance, which would include, in my case, is reading, uh, is, is, is throwing out support towards others. I found when I was depressed during this time, the more support that I threw out towards others, the better I felt about myself. So instead of, of taking to social media and, and taking to my friends and just really going off on about how miserable I am, I had to force myself to realize, okay, it's okay to vent and to let it out and to acknowledge it, 
but also to not bring everybody down around me. And it's not an easy thing to do, and it does take a lot of practice. Um, that's where a lot of times if, if you hit a very devastating point in life and you really hit depression very heavily, you want to go see somebody sometimes in the medical field because they're trained for that. Our friends are not trained to listen to us sometimes when we get a little too almost aggressive in a way of wanting to pull them down into our depressed state. So if you feel that you're pushing your friends away, be aware of how how we're talking with them and how we're treating our friends because we want the support, but then sometimes we don't know how to handle it and we don't know what to do and and, and we're all wrapped up. So I I hit this depressed day. I made sure that, you know, when I vented, I vented to my wife. She was a great support system throughout this. And through doing this, I, I, I realized, okay, I got to use the support for the positivity. So I started being very positive to the people around me. And it was, it was forceful uh, in some cases to even be positive because I was in a very dark place. And to really sit back and realize that, you know what, it's okay. I have to acknowledge where I'm at. I am depressed. I, 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 what is my depression caused by? It's caused by this unknown. Um, we just lost a massive amount of income to the family. Uh, how are we going to pay our bills? I can let all this overwhelm me, shut down and break down, or I have to turn this into motivation. And I'm very goal oriented. If you're not goal oriented, you want to probably read a Tony Robbins book. You want to read a Zig Ziglar book uh, and really find out how to set goals because goals are so important in life because when we are getting kicked in the face and life will kick you in the face, people will stab you in the back. And when that happens, your goals and your beliefs are what get you through it. So you have to have those set. They have to be concrete. I'm very passionate about my goals and you know what? Nothing's going to stop me from doing it and nothing's going to stop me from protecting my house. So that's one of the biggest things to remember is protect your house, protect your goals. And that's where that self maintenance comes into play. So I'm in this dark place and I'm, I'm throwing out support and, and I'm venting and making sure that I'm not pulling people down and I'm allowing the support to actually help. And that's sometimes what, what we don't do is, is when somebody really is trying to help us, we, we want to keep pushing them down and we have to be aware of it. And, and so much of, of breaking through some of the self-imposed depression, I feel, is the self-awareness of where we are depression wise. So figuring out, okay, I need to let this support uplift me. And believe me, at at times it's painful almost. At times it's hard. It's like I I don't want to feel happy. I want to be misery almost is what my brain's telling me. But we have to remember that's not what we want because it only feeds us worse and then it becomes worse. Take the support for what it is and just allow it to happen. And Force yourself through it sometimes. Force yourself to smile. Believe me, it's amazing what happens when we just force ourselves to smile, even when we don't want to smile, for what it does to us, what it does to us mentally, what it does to us physically. There's a lot of changes that happen in just forcing out a smile, forcing out a laugh. You know, have a backup plan of even movies or, or shows that you watch that make you laugh because it does heal and it does help with the depression. It, it's very hard to be laughing and depressed at the same time. Um, you know, people will tell me, oh, that I've done that before. And, and I'm sure you have uh, or you have at times. But you know what? When we're laughing all of a sudden, everything feels better. So I'm in this dark place and I'm, I'm trying to reach out for the support. I'm, I'm confused with what I'm going to do in life. And, and now I'm in the job hunt. I haven't been looking for a job here in a while in, in this case of, man, I have a lot of different things juggling now. I'm, I'm at a point where I, I've started a company that I love and I'm doing something that I truly would become passionate about that is now extremely important to me. I, I want to have a job now that allows me to, to give a lot of the energy that I want to towards this company and help it continue to grow because this has become something very magical. Uh, if you haven't followed us on YouTube, check us out on YouTube. If you haven't followed us on Twitter, get on Twitter. I mean, we're on all sorts of social media under Driven Industries. And uh, it's D-R-1-V-N. It's not an I. Um, and, and check us out and see what it's about and see what we're about. And you can listen to this and realize that, hey, for this last week of all the support and everything that threw out, I was in an extremely dark place. I mean, I was at a dark place enough that I'm, I start questioning my purpose in life and why am I even here? So I finally started to, okay, I got to push through this. I got to push through this. I got to look at my goals. I got to do some self-love. So I'm watching some, some me time. I'm, I'm watching some movies that are making me laugh. I, I start reading again. I start looking at different blogs out there. And I, I start making sure that I juggle only enough of what I can handle and what is important to me and really prioritize that. 
Because when you're depressed, we have to stay active. If we're not active, and trust me, it's a pain to keep active. It's a pain, but it helps tremendously. Stay active. Keep doing what you want to do, but you've got to force yourself to do it. Just like we have to force ourselves sometimes to wake up. We have to force ourselves to go outside. Every small thing that we force ourselves to do, we start creating that better habit again. And we can break through the depression in a sense, depending on what kind of depression it is. So, you know, I'm forcing myself to go outside, but I, I did stop doing certain things. Like I stopped working out. I stopped walking my dog. And that only kind of fed towards the depression. But I really wanted to focus in on what's important to me. And, and throwing out the support actually did the most mentally healing for me and realizing it's okay to be not okay. It's okay to feel this way. Uh, it's okay to go to a, a dark place because I can pull myself back out of it. I have a family around me that loves me. My mom loves me. My, my wife loves me. And I got to take the love for what it is, even though I might want to try and push it away. I have to accept it. And, and sometimes it's gritting your teeth, but accept it and let it come in. So that ends up happening. Next thing you know, my wife ends up losing her job. So what do you do now? Well, I had taken a job, you know, thankfully that uh, for a brief period, though, we were actually both unemployed, essentially, uh, completely now freaking out inside. And I had to stop it. My wife had went on vacation. And you know what? I sat down and I looked at my goals. And I said, what's important to me in life? I can do one of two things. I can curl up in a ball and be defeated and let this overcome me and now ruin my life and start to take my passions away from me and take everything away from me that I've worked so hard to, to, to accomplish. Or I can pick up these pieces just like almost a relapsed uh, addict. I pick up these pieces and I go back at it. So what did I do? I picked up the pieces and I went back at it. Why? Because I wanted it that bad. I did not want to fail. And you know what? The only one that ever fails is, is we fail ourselves because we don't find that inner strength and you can find that inner strength. But where does it come from? I really believe it comes from goals and it comes from a desire to want more. So if you haven't sat down, you haven't wrote out goals, set five goals for the year. You'd be surprised if you have something that you're reaching for and there's something that you want to accomplish. It's amazing what ends up happening. So set something that you want to accomplish. Set five goals and they can be big goals. They can be small goals. I'll give you an example. You know, one of, one of my goals for the year uh, was to make $160,000 this year. Uh, it was, it's not the most money I've ever made. It's not the least amount of money I ever made. And some people go, wow, that's a ton of money you don't understand. Well, I live in California and, and trust me, I, I do understand in some areas that it's a ton of money in some areas it's not a ton of money. It all kind of depends. Uh, and so it, this was something that was very important to me. How am I going to do this? Okay, I'm going to take this job and I'm going to be the best at it. So I got to get my mindset straight. So I take the job, boom, positive right there. Positive reinforcement, allowing the, the support to help me and reach around me, allowing my friends to talk to me, allowing my friends to keep me built up, throwing out as much support as I possibly could. I, I start feeling better about myself. Okay, now, now I have to look at the positives in life because you can either look at it glass half full or glass half empty. I'm a glass half full type of guy. So what are my positives? Okay, let's accept what's happened. Okay, I, I've lost my job. My wife has lost her job. Um, we have no income that's going to be coming in here shortly. Uh, how do I change this? I'm not going to wallow in defeat. I cannot be defeated because, you know what, this is too important to me. Other people are too important to me. This business is too important to me. My wife is too important to me. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm taking this job and I'm going to be the best at it. But to be the best at it, I have my support coming in. And what are my goals? I'm going to have to reshift my goals here a little bit. So I created some new goals here for the rest of the year. So now I have new goals in place. So what do I'm going to do? I have to do everything I can to accomplish this because if I accomplish it, my life becomes better and I become more and it all becomes more. And you know what? I can get myself back to that mentally strong place. And over the course of four days, I noticed that I was back in tip top shape. Uh, back into the shape of uh, almost investing too much time in work, uh, of the desire and the fire that that you know people were even bringing up. Hey, you seem a little angry. It's like I'm not angry. Trust me, that uh, I'm very intense, and and my intensity can come off as aggression, and it's not by any means. Um, I found that when you actually really are open with people about you know if you have a passion like with mine, it's it's suicide awareness and mental health. You'd be surprised how many other people start to really fall into your life that have the same passions. So, you know, having goals throughout the, the, the course of all this and, and having a desire throughout the course of all this and, and allowing the support to come in and allowing to accept what happened, but to also not allow yourself to be defeated by it and keeping to a schedule and keeping to a plan really helps you push through this and helps you become more and helps you achieve what you want to achieve. 
So I hope you get something from this, and I, and I hope this makes sense to you. And it, it's all about knowing where you want to go in life, and that helps so much with some of the depression out there and some of the anxiety out there of knowing what we want out of life. And those are just a couple of the tools that I found really do help and really do work. And, and trust me, they work for me tremendously. And I, I couldn't be more thankful that, you know, I, I was able to have that support around me. And if you don't have that support around you, reach out for that support because it's there. You know, reach out to us even. Reach out to us on social media. Reach out to us through Facebook, through Twitter, uh, through Instagram. More than happy to give the support out there because I know what it's also like to be alone. And when we're alone, it, it, it's self-defeating, and it's a huge part of it to have that support. So definitely reach out for it. So if you're going through depression, and, and, and it's kind of self-imposed depression because of, of things outside of your, your control, you know, the tools that I really have and, and the suggestions I have, one, you know, reach out for the support and allow the support to help you. Set some goals and, and make them goals that you want that are important to you to accomplish. With that, Know your direction. Have a direction of where you want to go. Force yourself to still do some of your daily normal activities that bring you happiness. I mean, those right there will help keep your mindset where it needs to be, and you can break back through it, and you can break back through to where you were, where you mentally want to be strength-wise. So... It's all about people helping people, and, and this is a ton of passion for me, and I hope you got something out of it because I, I try to always pass along just an experience and a tool, and it's kind of like, the hey, this is what happened, this is what I found out, and this is what worked for me, and maybe it'll work for you, and that's what it was really about is it's sharing, of, yeah, I've been there before, I can relate to you if you're depressed, I can relate to you if you have anxiety, and these are the tools I use, and you can try them if you want, or you can not try them, it's okay, but if we don't keep trying, we'll never find out what works for us because we're all a little different. We're all a little bit unique and we're all special. And that's what makes us special. So thank you for tuning into this podcast. And next week at podcast, I'm going to end up having a guest speaker on. And again, every Sunday, uh, I'm doing a new podcast out. It'll be uploaded to SoundCloud. And we're actually going to be switching over to another uh, program that I'll be blasting out on social media called Anchor. And it won't be all just me sitting here talking. It'll be more of a hands-on interview process and, and sharing tools and sharing experiences. Because it's all about people helping people. And if you want to be a part of this podcast and you want to do one with me, you know, feel free to email me, feel free to text me, feel free to direct message me, whatever it takes, and we'll be able to set it up where we can actually do this together, uh, even if you're not in the local Orange County area, and, and we can have a chance to share your experience and share the tools that you found that work, because again, like I said, it's all about people helping people, and it's okay to be not okay, and the one thing that you have to remember is we can do it, and we can do it together, so again, I'm Eric, I'm with Driven Industries, I founded this company based on, on what drives us and what our passion is in life. And one of the biggest passions I have is people helping people, suicide awareness through sobriety, through any kind of mental illness, mental health that we're going through. We can do it together. So thanks for tuning in. New podcast up next week. Make sure you check us out and subscribe to our channel on YouTube, uh, Driven Industries. Check us out on Twitter under Driven Industries. Check us out on, on Instagram, Facebook. Reach out to us. We're here for you. We got your back. And no matter what you're going through, you can do this. So let's do this together. You and I can do it.